Dark Souls. As any action-adventure game should, Dark Souls provides the experience of leaving our world and diving deep into another. Visuals, sound, and narrative obviously play a huge role in this, but in my eyes, what truly takes a person to another world are game's mechanics. They're the medium for the player to exist and be within that world, and without well-designed mechanics, you're just left with a poorly interactive movie. Games can be more than that, and in this video series, I'm going to analyze the mechanics of Dark Souls and break down how each one works and how it influences the player's experience. I'll highlight the things they do right and the things they could have done better. Let's get started. Dark Souls is a game where every movement counts. The combat is focused around the consequence of previous moves and positioning rather than fast-paced inputs. This is the result of an animation style rooted in realism. Depending on the weight and size of the weapon, attack animations are relatively slow, with startup lag containing anticipation that telegraphs the attack and ending lag containing recovery lag from the attack. Due to this lag, observation, patience, and tactics embody the virtues of Dark Souls gameplay. However, despite the intentional presence of lag, quick thinking and good reactions are still valuable due to clever design choices that acknowledge players' inputs in both the starting and ending lag of animations. Let's look at examples frame by frame to more clearly understand how the designers managed to juggle intuitive controls, input responsiveness, and high lag animations. We'll start off by taking a look at the startup of one of Dark Souls' most important mechanics, rolling. To start a roll, the player presses the B button in a direction. However, before the roll animation begins, there's a three-frame window where the player's character does not respond. This delay allows players to input a direction after pressing the dodge button, making rolling easier. Without this three-frame delay, rolling would be more difficult. Players would always have to input a direction prior to hitting the dodge button in order to perform a roll. Otherwise, they'll perform a backstep. This feature is literally programmed lag and less responsive but it makes rolling more intuitive since the player does not need to concern themselves with the order of their inputs, just the feeling of doing them together. Another example of Dark Souls using moments of lag properly is found in the startup of attack animations. In the starting lag of an attack, the player can move the control stick in different directions to influence where their attack will hit. These pivoting attacks allow a player's input to have some influence during lag, ensuring that a player remains engaged in what is happening opposed to passively watching what is occurring. Both of these examples and design choices use starting lag to create more intuitive controls and grant the player precious split seconds to observe, think, and respond to different situations. In addition to utilizing player inputs during startup lag, Dark Souls uses another clever design trick to compensate for its relatively high lag animations, input windows. Normally in games, when a player enters animations such as jumping, dodging, or attacking, Players may not give additional commands until the current animation finishes in order to maintain the weight of the animation. Dark Souls follows this gaming convention to maintain weight, but utilizes input windows to remain responsive. Once again, taking rolling as an example, you can see here that if I input another roll during the first half of a current roll animation, the game does not recognize my input and my character merely finishes the initial roll. However, if I input a roll command during the second half of a roll animation, the game will recognize my input and buffer a second roll once the first roll finishes. Slowing this down, you can clearly see me inputting a roll command before the current roll finishes, yet my character rolls twice in a row. I conceptualize these mid-action periods of time in which player input is recognized as input windows. When the game recognizes my inputs during my current animation, I am in an active input window. In my opinion, input windows are the backbone of responsive and deep player mechanics. Dark Souls exclusively uses one type of input window, the press buffer. The press buffer listens for a press input when it is active, but only transitions to a new state at the end of its duration. Press buffers generally allow for planning ahead and performing combinations of movements without perfect timing. For example, this attack string combo, I'm inputting additional attacks before the previous attack ends, but it recognizes my input if it was within the press buffer window and continues the attack string. In fact, all of Dark Souls movements have a small press buffer window at the end of their animation, approximately 12 frames or 0.4 seconds according to my tests. Attacking, rolling, item use, stagger, parrying, even getting up from a ladder all have buffers at the end of the animation. The inputs and destination states allowed for these buffers also encompass the majority of moves the player can initiate on their own, including attacking, rolling, item use, and parrying. My testing and methods for frame data collection are rudimentary and certainly not infallible, 
but provide the general idea in the absence of data mining the actual frame data. Another important feature of Dark Souls mechanic design is buffer priority. Regardless of the order of player inputs, if an attack is buffered during another attack, it will override any other buffered input, as can be seen here, where I buffer a roll first, but input an attack afterwards. Buffering an attack, then attempting to buffer a roll, will also result in attack. The attack buffer has priority over the roll buffer. This results in players thinking more carefully about hitting the attack input again, as it is much more punishable than roll and therefore likely to lead to death if pressed at the wrong time. Having introduced these four central mechanics, I'll end my analysis with one final fifth mechanic that is fundamental to Dark Souls combat system, branching. Dark Souls has separate attack animations that can only be reached through press buffers. For example, while dual wielding the claymore, there are two unique animations with slightly different behavior that can only be reached through buffers during the end of the light attack. A second light attack leads to an upward vertical swing and a heavy attack leads to a spin move with a strong horizontal slash. I conceptualize this use of buffers leading into unique attack animations as branching. Dark Souls branching and resulting weapon movesets are limited and simple, but encourage exploration to find new weapons and experimentation upon finding them, a shining example of a combat mechanic reinforcing adventure engagement. Ultimately, Dark Souls is an incredibly deep and cleverly designed game. There are many other important, well-done systems related to the combat in Dark Souls that I'm skipping over, as many of them are extensively covered by the community and wikis and other videos. The stamina bar and its management, the bonfire and health system interaction, poise, stagger, stability, equipment builds, and equip load, all aid greatly in contributing to Dark Souls' experience, and deserve close study. With that being said, I don't mean to imply that Dark Souls' combat system is perfect. At times, its engagements can feel one-dimensional due to several shortcomings including limited options of approaching large groups of enemies and the absolute effectiveness of bait-and-pull strategies. One such solution includes introducing an additional player approach option that feels unique. One input window, not used often, hold buffers, are a perfect fit. Hold buffers are similar to press buffers, but additionally require the player to be holding the button at the end of the window. Hold buffers are tactically different and more intentional as the input must not only be pressed, but held until the end of the window. This results in a distinct feel that matches charging moves. This could be implemented in a variety of ways, with one simple implementation being a stunning area of effect attack that players can buffer out of a roll. Another shortcoming of Dark Souls are unintentional inputs due to liberal use of press buffers. A classic example of this shortcoming is a player panicking and buffering an attack when in the heat of battle. After buffering the attack, they may see that they're going to be killed by the enemy. Allowing players to outright cancel into a roll within a very short input window at the start of their attack could provide one last exciting opportunity. I find this one more chance to rectify a mistake is more engaging than simply watching helplessly as your character gets clubbed to death. The implications of adding mechanics to such a refined system can often be vast, but with proper care and iteration would undoubtedly open doors. I hope I've shown that the mechanics covered in this video are crucial in enabling players to immerse themselves in Dark Souls' world. In addition, through the use of underutilized combat mechanics such as hold buffers and cancel windows, future Dark Souls type games can expand on the possibilities of the genre and its mechanics. Dark Souls' intuitive combat system allow for the controller to mentally disappear from a player's hands, thus allowing them to engage seamlessly, figuratively becoming their character. Depth and options allow for them to learn, grow, and express themselves through their play, diving even deeper into the world. The mechanics accomplish these qualities and form the foundation that other areas of gameplay can be built upon to ultimately provide an engaging experience. In my next video, I will continue my analysis going up the mechanic set chain of Dark Souls, our next dive being camera design. I plan to have that video up within two to three weeks depending on what other responsibilities arise. I'll provide further updates for the consequent level, enemy, and encounter design videos to round out the series in the camera design video. I hope you both enjoyed and learned something from this video. I would like to hear any feedback or thoughts, so feel free to leave comments here or contact me through my site that I'll link in the description below. Thanks for watching.